Whales, arguably the most important resource of the 18th century, were brought in by the people of New Bedford, Massachusetts. But what you may not have known is the fascinating story behind the Azorian whalers helping to create this through their immigration to the New Bedford area. Portuguese immigrants affected the whaling industry and society of New Bedford by becoming involved in the local economy, bringing in whales to supply the world, and helping to make New Bedford the whaling capital of the world. The Azorian Islands, an archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, was the group of islands along with Cape Verde that had an incredible influence on the whaling in New Bedford. These islands were uninhabited for thousands of years, but then in the 1400s they were soon filled with hopeful immigrants, mainly from Portugal. These people fled to the Azores for the same reasons that they later fled the Azores to come to America. The Europeans left their homes to come to the Azores because of crime, starvation, overpopulation, rebellion, and some other similar causes. The newly discovered Azores were soon filled with hopeful immigrants. As time passed and overpopulation came to the Azores Islands, people began to experience problems. There simply weren't enough jobs for all the people on the islands. There was also a fee of $300 for any person of military age that wanted to leave the islands. Well, the Azorians had a very hard life. Uh, it was a volcanic archipelago of nine islands, uh, and there was almost no soil there, very little soil anyway. Um, so their ability to farm the volcanic islands was very difficult. When the Azores were in bad shape, the whaling industry arrived. Whaling in the 19th century was controlled almost as much on dry land as it was at sea. Large American whaling vessels were deployed to specific cruising grounds in the North Atlantic and were told to return at specific times with a certain material depending on the market, such as whale oil, sperm oil, or other material. At the top of tall masts, there were lookouts, always keeping sharp watch for whales while cruising. When whales were spotted, smaller whale boats were lowered over the side, and the chase was on. These smaller boats would hunt down the whales, then the whalemen would use many different types of weapons to bring the whales in. The most used was the togglehead harpoon, but whalers of this time still needed other weapons to take out these beasts. These included traditional harpoons, shoulder guns, blubber room spades, and model triworks. These commercial whaling tools were very heavy duty, made of iron and steel, and made for heavy and repetitive use. These tools helped New Bedford in the 1800s to be called the whaling capital of the world. Whales in the time of the 1800s were used for things that you would need every day. Sperm oil, for example, was found in the blubber of a sperm whale, and it was in high demand these times. It was used for many different kinds of lamps, including lighthouses and public and private areas. It was also used for lubricating rapid machinery because it kept its lubrication in very high temperatures. Cities all over the world needed sperm oil to light their streets at night. Without the valuable oil, the world would have been much more dark. Like sperm oil, the main reason for whales to be hunted, spermaceti, a valuable oil from these whales, was prized for its ability to burn at high temperatures without melting easily and not giving a scent. Baleen from the whales were used for many things that plastic or steel would be used for today. Baleen is the part of the whale that acted as its teeth, and it was used for hoop and women's skirts, umbrella ribs, and fishing poles. Being short of a material like baleen at this time would be like having a lack of plastic or metal today. Whales were also hunted for their most valuable resource, ambergris, which would come in lumps and would be used as an aphrodisiac, incense, medicine, and other things. Believe it or not, whaling was introduced to the Azorian people by Americans who stopped at these islands during their long voyages around the North Atlantic. The American whaling vessels stopped at these islands for food and supplies. Because of the Azores surrounding oceans being filled with prized sperm whales, many American ships began to stop here. They would actually offload whale oil there. They had agents and they had offices there. Uh, but uh, another important reason was they would take on crew. Uh, and um, they knew that they could hire an experienced crew uh, in the Azores for a fraction of the price that they could sign them on here in New Bedford. And they would take guys your age and, all, and, and older who were very experienced, weren't afraid of shore-based whaling. They were very used to, uh, they had sea legs, they could, they could operate these long boats in high seas and they were really good at tossing harpoons. They had done it with their fathers and grandfathers and uh, and they were extremely strong so they hired these guys at a fraction of the price and they knew that they would get their money's worth. Even in the 1850s it was well known that the Azorians were master whalers. Azorian men were taken on board the American whaling vessels as crew and brought back to America. 
They were hard workers and great crewmen, plus they worked for a good price, which was good for the Americans. On whaling vessels, men got paid by the amount of whale they got. Each crew member got paid a lay, or a percent of the profit made. A captain would get the most, while an ordinary crewman would get much less. However, there was a catch. When the Azorian men got back to the Azores after years of labor on the ships and asked for payment, they often received nothing because the ship's whale oil was yet to be sold. The Azorian whalemen would t head off with these Yankee whale boats, uh, these, these Yankee whale sh ships from Nibet. They'd go around the world, sometimes four years, to build the ship. And the last place that the Nibet whale ship would stop would be in the Azores. And so these guys were homesick and they'd say to the captain, hey, we're home, we want to be paid, we want off. And then the captain would say, well, we can't pay you here. Uh, we, we haven't even sold the oil yet. The ship has to go back to the bedroom, to the county houses, and, and then if the market's really good, we can pay you. But otherwise, you have to come back with us, or you can just give up your pay and stay home. And they could always count on a few homesick guys saying, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm staying home. But many more said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, work for four years for nothing. I'm going to go back to New Bedford, I'm going to get my pay, and I'll take the next ship home. They had to journey back to New Bedford to get paid. When they reached New Bedford, most felt the need to stay, for there was much economic opportunity. The men would see jobs for whaling, and even jobs outside of it. The men could get into these jobs, which helped the economy, making every industry, including whaling, more prosperous, and jobs that included any craft that helped whaling ships in particular, greatly helped the industry. When they got here, and they were paid, and they saw how many jobs were here, there were mills and all kinds of land-based jobs, and there was food on the tables, and they decided, you know what, I think I'll stay here. These Azorian people would often use the money they earned to send for the rest of their families to come to America. And then over the course of years, uh, their family heard about their successes and more family members came over to join them. And that's how Azorians, one by one, family by family, village by village, uh, came to America and started a new life. This system brought over many more Portuguese to America. The Azorian men now working on the whaling vessels in America would also send money back to their families on the islands simply to let them have a better life there. This had great effect on the Portuguese islands because money was going into their nation. Great news began to spread of the success that immigrants were having that went to America. This made it even more tempting for a struggling European to want to immigrate to America. At this time in history, many Portuguese had immigrated to the New Bedford area. New Bedford had the highest population of Portuguese in a single city in all of America. A whole 16% of the population in New Bedford was Portuguese. When they got there, they became very involved in the local economy, especially the whaling industry. They also worked at textile mills, docks, and agricultural workplaces. Whaling had a huge impact on the Portuguese because it was what brought many of them to America, and it was what employed them in their new society. Whaling was actually almost a glorious trade at this time. It was perilous and dangerous work, so you had to be a skilled worker, and this brought excitement. You would get to say that you whaled out of a town that supplied more than half of the whaling needs for around the world. It was in 1823 when the whaling fleet in New Bedford overtook the title from the whaling industry in Nantucket. This was a very important mark in whaling history because Nantucket had a very large fleet. Later in the 1800s, 400 out of the over 700 ships in the world called New Bedford their home port. Because of all the economic growth in New Bedford, New Bedford became the wealthiest city per capita in the world. This was mainly from the whales being brought in at the time. Whales were so large that a single sperm whale could hold nearly three tons of oil. Oil was very valuable at 30 cents for a half gallon in 1831 and $1.77 per half gallon in 1854. This shows the rapid growth in the need for whale oil in the 1800s. All of the rich whale vessel captains of the time built their large homes by the water from their success. There's no doubt that New Bedford and the whaling there made a big impact on the whole world. Much credit goes out to the Portuguese whalers that helped to make this great history happen. And even though the whaling industry did eventually decline and die out, it made an incredible difference in the lives of millions, billions of people in so many ways. It lit the streets of thousands of cities worldwide. It allowed for there to be brighter lamps. Its lubrication purposes allowed for the Industrial Revolution to have fast-moving machinery. Portuguese immigrants affected the whaling industry in New Bedford by bringing in whales to supply all people and helping to make New Bedford the whaling capital of the world.